Why is everyone fat and stupid? There's something wrong with the way we're eating. And the, what's wrong is that we're eating way too many carbohydrates. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So a lot of you guys asked me to do a response to this video of Joe Rogan's. His guest was Jordan Peterson, who is a clinical psychologist, an author, and a very popular YouTuber. But the reason you guys wanted me to check this out is because Jordan is also following a 100% meat-only diet. The, your diet. Um, you're on this carnivore diet yes, now. Yes, I eat beef and salt and water. That's it. And I never cheat. Wow. And people say vegan is a restrictive diet. We're talking beef and salt are his only source of nutrients. And they were talking about this 30 ounce steak that Jordan had the night before with Joe Rogan. And if you punch this into chronometer, you'll see it's a completely deficient meal as far as vitamins A and C go and absolutely no fiber whatsoever. So something Jordan's not talking about here is how infrequently he must poop. I want you to get your blood tested because I think yeah. if... It'd be pretty funny if it was in good shape. Yeah, it would be. Well, that's pretty shocking to be on such an extreme diet and not get a blood test done. Well, it turns out Jordan's daughter is also doing the same diet as he is. In fact, she's the one that turned him on to it. Does she get blood work done? Uh, yep, and her blood work... I won't comment on that. I don't know the details of her blood work. Not calling Jordan a liar, but I find it a little hard to believe he wouldn't know the results of his daughter's blood tests for this extreme diet that they're both doing. I mean, wouldn't they want to know? Wouldn't he want to know if there's some kind of negative things happening? What's fascinating to me is I haven't heard any negative stories about people doing this. That's pretty funny, Joe, because a few months prior to this interview, you had Sean Baker on your podcast, who was also doing a meat-only diet. And after that, he revealed his blood tests, and they were quite not not good. For instance, on multiple tests, Sean Baker's fasting glucose levels were higher than 126, which by definition is diabetes. And on his hemoglobin A1C test, which tests for diabetes, he was on the extreme high end of pre-diabetic. I haven't heard any negative stories about people doing this. And furthermore, Sean Baker's testosterone levels were abysmally low, about those of a 100-year-old man. But Sean thought none of this mattered. Just all these blood lab panel results were meaningless because he can lift heavy weights. In this video here, I've got 500 pounds, 5 pounds on a trap bar. I've got no belt on. I'm deadlifting it for 11 reps. There are very few human beings in, on earth they can do that. It also was no surprise that Sean Baker's cholesterol levels were high as well. Yes. Because you had a 30-ounce yes. steak last night. Yes. yes. So a single 30-ounce sirloin steak has about 670 milligrams of cholesterol. So you would think it'd be safe to assume that, like Sean Baker, Jordan has high cholesterol as well. I want your blood profile. I want to find out what's going on with you because... One of the big mis misconceptions when it comes to cholesterol and saturated fat and food is that if you eat dietary cholesterol, that it affects your blood yeah. cholesterol levels. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not, it's a super mm -hmm. common misconception. Finally, Joe breaks out his patented low carb bro science, saying here that dietary cholesterol, the cholesterol in your food, has no effect upon the cholesterol levels in your blood. When the fact of the matter is that pretty much every non meat, dairy, egg industry funded study into this subject has shown that dietary cholesterol does affect blood cholesterol. For instance, here, one of the largest studies of its kind, the Oxford Epic study, found conclusively that those who eat the least dietary cholesterol, vegans, had the lowest blood cholesterol. And guess who had the highest levels? Meat eaters. Hmm, why? Because they're eating food containing cholesterol. Well, those, so the thing about clinical studies with diet are virtually impossible to conduct because you just can't, you can't conduct a proper randomly distributed controlled um, experiment. It's too hard. So a lot of what we're trying to do is pull out information from correlations. Right. You can't do it. Oh, really, Jordan? So you're saying scientific inquiry into diet and nutrition is impossible because we can't always have these perfect clinical trials. So we know absolutely nothing about diet. So according to you, nothing is known. Eating processed meat, bacon and sausage is just as good or bad for you as eating beans and potatoes. Um, and I'd, I'd like to find out what your nutrient levels are and where they're coming yep. from. I mean, what... what how yeah, much I'm nutrients getting a little, are you getting? I'm getting a little cramping in my toes from time to time, so I'm not sure about potassium or, or, yeah, or magnesium. That's, yeah. that's a possibility. And also minerals, you know. Yeah. I mean, certain minerals you're getting from vegetables that you're probably not getting. 
Wow, this is pretty rare, but Joe is the voice of nutrition reason here. Well, there are people, there are people who basically lived on meat. Yeah. You know, the Inuit did. Oh no, not the Inuit argument. Instead of spending five minutes debunking the Inuit argument, let me play you a clip of low carber Jimmy Moore debating Dr. McDougal about this. And that's the Inuits. They lived on <laughs> whale blubber and primarily a mostly meat-based diet, and yet they were free from heart disease and no health complications whatsoever. Uh, how do you explain that? You're getting desperate. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about this a minute. I said all large success successful populations of people. Would you consider the Inuit Eskimo a large successful population of people? They're the largest ones that we know that have that carnivorous diet. Well, they're, they're a matter of a few thousand people who lived on the fringes of the environment, the extremes of the environment. But the typical Inuit Eskimo, who I've studied for many, many years, the average uh, lifespan was 27 years, just like other hunter-gatherers. The Inuit Eskimo has the highest rate of osteoporosis of any population on planet Earth and Every decade of life compared to Americans, they have a higher rate of osteoporosis. And with this being the Joe Rogan podcast, of course, we got to get some attacks in on carbs and vegans. Why is everyone fat and stupid? That's a question, <laughs> man. Because it's new. Is it? Something's yes, it is. It's new. And it's not sedentary lifestyle. That, that hypothesis doesn't seem to hold water. There's something wrong with the way we're eating. And the, what's wrong is that we're eating way too many carbohydrates. All right, some carb bashing. I don't even think these guys even know what carbs are. Like we know, we have a book, Keep It Carb Baby, Whole Food Plants. But when your average person, your average non-vegan speaks about carbs, they're usually talking about something completely different. It's like I really liked sweets. Like I kind of lived on peanut butter sandwiches and chocolate milk. Really? Are you saying that peanut butter jelly sandwiches and chocolate milk are high carb foods? But that was my go-to food, you know both of which were terrible for me. Um, but um, after I stopped eating carbohydrates for a month, the carbohydrate cravings went away. Well, Jordan is right in that those foods do have carbs in them, but about half of their calories come from protein and fat combined. So yeah, peanut butter jelly sandwiches and chocolate milk are not high carb foods. If you really want to get high carb, let's get real here. Let's talk about fruit like bananas, mangoes, dates, and starches, potatoes, um, rice, whole food plants, not some processed junk food, Jordan. There's positive benefits that a lot of people achieve um, and, and experience when they switch to a vegan diet. Wow, is Joe actually to be cool towards a vegan diet? And right. one of the things it is, is you get off of the standard American diet with lots of refined sugars and a lot of preservatives, and then you find positive benefits. Chris Kresher has gone into depth about this, but then over time, the nutritional ben uh, deficiencies in that start to wear on your health. Yep. That is complete BS, Joe. Where is the science that shows that? I've been vegan now for almost eight years and my blood test results are perfect. Everything is within range. I bet you or Sean Baker or Jordan here can't say that. And I have my results up here on YouTube and I'm not the only one. This is just completely unfounded. There's no science showing that inevitably over time become deficient on a vegan diet. And he talks about his low carb paleo friend there, Chris Kresser who says that we're all gonna get deficient on a vegan diet, then why is it on his own website, he sells dozens and dozens of nutritional supplements for his paleo meat diet. But that's the other thing too, you, you must have to get a lot of fat. Yeah, well I eat fatty cuts of steak and yeah. Michaela is buying fat directly from the butcher store and we cook that up, cut it into small pieces and fry it up till it's crispy. Wow. It's actually quite delicious. Oh, really, it's quite delicious eating your dead animals there who didn't want to die for you. And that's a huge problem I have with this meat-only carnivorous diet movement. It doesn't give a damn about the animals who don't want to die and don't need to die in order for us to be healthy. If that wasn't true, all us vegans should be sick and dead right now, which is just far from the truth. And furthermore, as Mike the Vegan has pointed out when he looked at Sean Baker's carnivorous diet, his diet requires about 10 times more carbon dioxide to be released into the atmosphere every day as compared to a vegan diet. So this meat-only carnivorous diet is completely unsustainable. So I urge anyone who's hearing about this and thinking they should try it to really look into the truth about this. There's no 
science that shows these diets are healthy, whereas there's mountains of science showing the healthful benefits of eating whole food, plant-based. So leave your questions and comments down below. What do you think is the worst thing about these carnivore diets? Is it the environmental destruction, the unnecessary killing of the animals, or the inability to poop or something else? Let us know down below. Hit like if you got something out of this video. Share it with a friend who's talking about the great benefits of carnivore diets. And until next time, this goes out to Joe and Jordan. Keep it carb, baby. Keep it carb.